guys and welcome to the next episode of Feed the Beast Tutorials. Today's episode, Energy, Fluid, and Item Laser Relays. First of all, I'm going to start with probably one of the most basic ones, and it's going to be the Fluid Laser Relay. Now, unlike the others, which have an advanced form, and the energy having an extreme form, the Liquid Laser Relay pretty much just has one form and that's it because it isn't limited on transfer rate or anything like that, unlike the others. So, the most basic principle of a laser relay is it is meant to be, it's not made for long range or anything, it's not made for anything like that. It is just made for sort of short range little systems that you might make. So, you know, it's nothing special, it's nothing big, it's nothing, you know, that you would do on a big scale. It's just for transporting, say, bits of power around your base, perhaps making sorting systems, it's made for those kind of things. Okay, so for example, fluid transfer. So what you want to do is place these two things down in the world onto the things you want to transfer the fluid from. So I want to place them down here. And just to give you guys sort of a bit of an idea of how you make these things, the energy laser relays are made like this with some red stone crystals, obsidian. And I did show you guys how to make items like this with the Atomic Reconstructor in the last episode. I'll leave a link in the, in the description if you want to go and check that out. And the rest of them you just reconstruct the previous version. So for example the energy reconstructs the fluid and the item reconstructs in the fluid again. So yeah, very, you know, sort of simple. So once you've made the energy ones you can then make them into these and transfer them back and forth. So what you're going to want to do first of all is, so say I want to transfer liquid from this fluid tank to the other one. What I'm first of all going to do is set this to output mode in the Ender.io tank. And I'm going to set this one to input. So all the water, in theory, should now come from here and go into here. So what you're going to need is a laser wrench. And you need to right-click on this. And you need to right-click on this. And there you go, the laser is connected. And now the fluid is being transferred. It doesn't really have a limitation. It's only really limited on the tank. So this tank can only transfer a certain amount. And that's what it's limited by. And if you, if you are holding a compass, as you can see it says here, you can modify it to make it go in both directions. Or just make it a one-way connection but as a rule most things you're going to be dealing with are going to allow you to transfer one way using the actual block but yeah you can do that using the fluid laser relays next we're going to move on to power now what i'm going to do first is put some coal in the sterling generator so that's going to sugar away and make a little bit of power so but what i'm going to do is just get some a optic capacitor just to make this thing go a little bit quicker Let's see, optic oh, capacitor, there it is. So we're just going to make this thing burn, you know, a little bit quicker and have a bit of a bigger buffer. So there it goes, it's producing a bit more power now. And the whole point is with these networks is it doesn't really matter how you link them up. So they come in three different tiers. I believe the basic can, um, has a base rate transfer of 1,000 RF per tick. The advanced has 2,000, not 2,000, 10,000. And the extreme having 100,000 RF. So quite a lot of power can be transferred, but don't think this can be transferred for free. It do, you do lose a little bit of energy using this, but you know for short range, you're not really going to notice it that much. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to here. And I'm going to connect it with a laser wrench. And what should be happening now is power should be then moving from this thing, and it's now being transferred into the capacitor bank. And what you can do is, um, say I want this thing to receive power as well, it doesn't matter how I hook it up, whether I go from there to there, or whether I break it and have it go from here to he here to here. It doesn't really matter how I do it. The power is still equally going to be equally dis distributed amongst these capacitor banks and the cylinder generator. So this is going to produce power and it's going to equally distribute it now between here and here. So as you can see, they're both receiving a fair rate of 26 R per tick. If you are having a big energy transfer, I'd probably upscale and probably go to an advanced, but for small rates of transfer, the basic one works perfectly fine. Okay guys, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So if I, so the item laser relays, you have two versions, the advanced and the regular, um, the basic one, the, item, the basic item laser relay. So the basic principle is once you place these things down, they sort of almost establish a bit of a network. And it acts like one inventory rather than acting as separate inventories once you connect them all up. 
So the most basic thing I'm going to show you is sort of a bit of a sorting system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this be an input chest and these be the output chests. I'm not going to sort them for now just to make it simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the item interface down and this has the ability to transfer items between um, so it has the ability to access all of these and treat them as one inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place basic item laser relays on here and one on here. I'm also going to place a hopper to allow me to interface items from the chest into here. I'm then going to connect them up. It doesn't matter whether I connect them like this or connect them like this. It really doesn't matter. I know that looks incredibly ugly and that's probably going to annoy so many people, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it set up like that. But notice you cannot connect um, certain ones if they are already connected. So you can see, it's recognised this is already in the same network, so it won't let me just connect those two like that. So just bear that in mind when you're establishing a network. So what I'm going to do is say I place items. So just with the basic ones, if I place items, it's going to recognise this is one inventory and it's going to start placing the items into these inventories. So as you can see, it picked one at random, which I presume is the closest one. So it... It's not really got any priority system or anything, it just finds an inventory and it dumps it in. It also works for the same way for exporting them. So if I get a chest down here, and I choose to put a hopper there, what it should now start doing is... Um, there we go. So yeah, now it is putting the sand out of that inventory and going, going into there. So if I put more sand in here, what it's going to do is place it in one of these inventories, but also I'm accessing... So this is basically where you an item interface is a way to interface with a system of um, storages like that. So what's happening now is it's going into there and it's going straight out. And that is the basic mechanics of a um, item laser, laser relays. Now these things get incredibly complicated once you start dealing with the advanced ones. Now I want to make something clear. You can run advanced laser relays through basic ones so, and, and it will still give the same effect. Now, if you're running a system of advanced ones you don't necessarily have to just continually have advanced laser relays like uh, everywhere in, in the whole network. It can consist of both basic ones and advanced ones and it will still work. So you can see I'm just going to have this up here, connect this up here and it's still going to work the same way as if I directly connected that to there. It doesn't matter the fact that I'm running it through a basic item interface. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to get another chest and I'm going to place it here. And I'm going to put a basic item laser relay on this for one very good reason. Now, the priority of these is a lot higher than this. This is priority zero. So what it will do is it will try and by default put anything in these chests before it will put them in here. Okay, so now I've shown you sort of the basics with the priority system. You're probably wondering, well, other than that, what's the point of spending the extra resources to make the advanced ones? And that would have to be the fact that you can um, add filters about what can go in and out of the chests. So, for example, I could specify I only want stone to go in here. Now, these things all have empty whitelists, which, mean no which means currently nothing can go in there. So only stone will go into here. So if I put in a bit of stone... And a bit of dirt. Let's see what happens. So what should happen is the stone should go into here, and because these have empty whitelists, it goes all the way down the priority list and goes, okay, right, dirt can't go in any of the other chests, so it's going to put it into the default inventory. So that's basically the gist of um, sorting. So for example, say I put some granite in here, and say I put um, some dirt in here. Now what should start happening is, so if I put some dirt, granite, sand and some stone, I see, so the stone ends up winding in here, because of the stone filter, the granite lands in here, and the dirt lands in here, and the sand goes to here. Now one thing I want to talk about, so I'm just going to quickly get some sand, and I'm going to stick it in here, is the smart whitelist function. So what you can do is you can click smart whitelist, and it will find everything that's in the chest and put it into the whitelist. Now you're probably wondering, this is a very small inventory, and it is, to add all the stuff you want to filter. Now you can get around this by adding an item filter. So if you stick this in here, and then say there's some sand in the chest, and you smart whitelist it, it will fill up the item filter first before it will start filling it in here. So you do have a much wider selection of stuff you can put in here. Now you can um, 
So this is the inbound stuff, so you can say whether it will respect met metadata, whether it will, will ignore NVT or respect NVT, whether it will ignore all dictionary or respect it. And then you have um, mod mode. Now, uh, if this is enabled, the filter will compare the mods item. So basically, it, it's a way to sort by mods if you want to go down that route. But I think for now, I'm just going to keep it all off. And if you guys want to experiment with these, you can do. But I'm not going to go into detail what metadata, MBT, or dictionary, or the mod mode is. Okay, guys. So the outbound mode feature isn't really that much more complicated. So, for example, these, let's take the sand, for example. Say I take the sand filter out here, which I already have done. And I put the sand into the filter for here. What I can basically say is sand will now go into the system. So if I say put sand in here, what should happen is, is sand is going to enter here. But what I can also set it to do is be on the outbound list, which means sand is now allowed to leave the inventory. So a bit like how you can do item filters and stuff for the inbound, it can also work for the outbound chest as well. So what you can do is if I place a hopper here, now what should start happening is sand is the only thing that's allowed to leave the inventory. But stone will not be allowed because it isn't on the outbound list. So there goes. sand will be extracted and put into here. So I suppose functionality for this, if you wanted to say when stuff goes into the chests, you can then automatically say export them to, um, I don't know, like say you wanted to export them to say furnaces and get them autom automatically smelted. Maybe an auto crafting system. I don't know. The choice is entirely up to you guys. I think that about draws the video to a conclusion. So thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed, goodbye from Potent Plum.